this video, we're going to look at the properties of negative numbers. So last video, we looked at the properties of real numbers. Those have names. These ones do not. But by the end of the video, you should be able to evaluate the following expressions by understanding how negative numbers work. So let's start. First, we'll look at multiplication. So if we have negative 1 and we multiply it by any number b, so this could be 3, 4, 7, 18, so on, whatever number b, Essentially, we're just taking the negative of that number. So negative 1 times b would give us negative b back. So for instance, if I have the number 3, I multiply that by negative 1, what I get as a result is negative 3. If we think about this on the real number line, for example, let's put 0 here, let's put 3 over here. Essentially, when you multiply something by a negative number, what you're doing is you're just flipping that number to the other side of the number line. So when you multiply something by negative 1, you're just going on the other side. So it's like flipping everything 180 degrees. So that's multiplying by negative 1. Now, when you take a negative and you multiply it by a negative number such as negative b, what you get is you get the positive version back. So you get positive b back. And this is really similar to what we've done up here. So another way of thinking about this is saying negative one times negative one times b. Well, there's two ways of doing this. First of all, you can multiply negative one and negative one together and get one back. Or we can think of this in steps. So negative one times b is the same thing as negative b. If we multiply that by negative one, well, let's draw this out. So let's say this is 0. Let's say this is some number b. When we multiply the number by negative 1, we get negative b. So we flip it around the 0. When we do this again, we just flip it back to b. So negative 1 times negative b just gives us b back. We've essentially done a double negative, which cancels it out. So you can think of this as like a double negation. Negative 1 times negative 1 is just positive 1. So if we multiply a negative by negative b, just gives us positive b back. So for example, if I take negative negative 2, I just get 2 back. Now, if we take a negative number such as negative a and we multiply it by b, then what we do is we just treat this sort of like negative 1 times a times b. So if we want, we can just say that this is uh, a times b first multiplied by negative 1, which are the same thing as negative ab. These are all equivalent. And typically, when you have a times b and you have a negative sign out front, we would just write this as negative ab without the brackets. That is also acceptable. Now, what if we do negative b times a? Well, this is really the same thing. It's negative 1 times b times a, but Based on the property of commutativity from before and the properties of real numbers, we know this is the same thing as a times b. And then we have exactly the same thing we had before. So this is the same thing as negative 1 times b times a, which is the same thing as negative ba, which results to exactly the same thing. So these final results are equivalent. Whether you have negative a times b or negative b times a, it's the same result. And again, you can think of this like the same number line. Imagine I have some number here that's a times b. If I multiply it by negative 1, well, look, now I'm on the other side at negative ab. Now here's where we're going to do some negatives with addition in brackets. And really, again, these are just secret distributivity rules. So I have negative 1 out front, and then I have a plus b in the brackets. So using distributivity, I do negative 1 times a, and I add it to negative 1 times b. So what that gives me is negative a plus negative b. So if you ever have minus a plus b, you get negative a plus negative b. And let's show this with an actual example. So if I have negative 2 plus 3, I can just do everything inside the brackets first, and I get negative 5. But what I can also do is I can take negative 2 plus 3, and I can distribute that negation into each one. So I can make this negative 2 plus negative 3, and that gives us negative 5. 
So regardless of which way we do this, we get the same result. Of course, when you have variables inside your bracket, you have to do the distributive method. So again, this was in the previous video. If you want the name written out, this is just the distributivity rule with a negative number, specifically negative one. Okay. Now, the final rule we're going to look at is when we, when we do a negative a minus b. So now we don't have a plus inside, we have a subtraction. But again, same thing is going on here. Negative 1 times a minus b, we can just distribute this inside. So this is a little bit different now. How do we do distributivity with this? Well, what we do is we're going to take negative 1 times a, and then we're going to add negative 1 times negative b. Because remember, when we have a minus b, this is the same thing as saying a plus negative b. So another way of looking at this problem here would be to say that, let's just clear up this thing. This is like saying we have negative 1 times a plus negative b. So when we distribute this, we get negative 1 times a, and negative 1 times negative b, and we add those together. So what we end up with is negative a on the left, and then we're adding negative 1 times negative b. So the two negatives here will cancel out, as we saw in one of the previous rules that we looked at. So we'll just end up with b. So this is the same thing, negative a plus b, as b plus negative a, according to commutativity, and that gives us b minus a. So if we have negative a minus b, this is the same thing as b minus a. So you can think of it as sort of flipping which one is being subtracted. Now, with a real example here, let's say we have negative 3 minus 2. So if we do the brackets first, we get negative 1. But we could also do negative 3 plus negative, negative 2. So that is distributing the negation to 3 and then the negation to negative 2. So negative 3 plus negative negative 2, which is the same thing as negative 3 plus 2, which gives us negative 1 as a final result. So no matter which way we do this, we end up with the exact same result. So that's it for the properties of negative numbers. At this point, you should be able to identify and evaluate the following. So these have variables in them, but remember we treat variables just as like dummy things. We don't really touch them. So we'll have a solution video for that posted within 12 hours. If you want to post your answers in the comments below before then, feel free to. But as always, if you have questions, uh, feel free to bug me.